Hi, welcome to our sensory story time. You should have a kit for this story time. When you pick it up, there are two pieces to it. There's a bag, which is what we're going to be using for today, and this is for next week with Miss Debbie's story time. So let's see what's in our sensory story time bag. We're gonna have some tongs, some tweezers, and there are things for a turkey, a, a Play-Doh squishy turkey. You'll definitely need this. This has all the directions, websites, and the recipes for our, what we're going to make. And the first thing we'll do today is we'll make our Play-Doh turkey. Our Play-Doh turkey has some feathers, some shade of brown modeling clay or dough. It's got a piece, a red piece, that's to make the, the turkey's comb. And there's an orange triangle for the beak. And my favorite part, oh, there should be two googly eyes in. You, know, don't, you won't need the bag. The bag is gonna be trash. So take everything out of your bag Find your pieces and get your brown dough, your brown modeling clay. Make sure the eyes aren't stuck to it. Take those off. First thing you need to do is make a head and a body. So your body is about two thirds the size. Make it sort of round and squishy like a a snowball or like a pear. I'm gonna do mine a little bit pear shaped, just a little bit narrower up at the top. Make your turkey's head. This is where you're gonna stick the beak and the comb and the eyes. And you need to put the head on the body to make it look really like a turkey. Squish the two pieces together so that they'll stay and give your turkey a neck. The next part you want to do is make a spot for the mouth to go. Now the beak wants to fall out, so you need to make what looks like a big mouth for your turkey to chomp on to the beak. At first, it almost looks like he's sticking out an orange tongue. Squish it so that it's in and so that it looks like it's the right place. Don't worry. If you're having fun and you want to redo it, you can. You can do this as many times as you want. The next thing we need to do is put the comb on top of his head. I made a little dent in the head, and I'm going to make it the head bite this and put it. This is the trickiest part. This is the part that always wants to fall off when I do it. Put that in. You still need eyes. One eye and two eyes. And there's my silly looking turkey. But turkeys have feathers. So you need to put your feathers in your turkey and make a big tail. There are four or five feathers in your bag. You just stick them in and arrange them the way you want to. And then if anything falls off, like it did on mine, you just squish it back up in place. And there you go. There's my silly looking November turkey. All ready. So that's a starting point. 
So this is an example, uh, parents, of a craft that can be either a product-oriented craft where you really want it to look like a turkey in the end, or it can be a process-oriented craft where really all you care about is that your child is having fun. And if the feathers are stuck in the head, fine. If the feathers make wings, fine. If the feathers are feet, fine. Your turkey can be creative. And um, the younger your child is, the more likely it will be. Process-oriented crafting is focusing on doing and the fine motor control and just learning how to squish and stick and work with dough and work with the pieces to create something. It's not as concerned about it looking like a turkey the way you would be if you're if you have a product focus. Product focus are the things that are more likely to end up on Pinterest or, or even Etsy. All right, there are some pieces left in my bag. There's a turkey. More feathers. Oh, a spoon. There's a spoon in here. That's for our sensory bin. We'll, we'll do that in a little bit. And there's a piece of contact paper. So this is very much just a process craft. This is sticky contact paper. When you're using it for your child, you're going to peel off the paper and stick it onto a wall, stick it onto a table. You'll have to tape it in place so that it stays put. And the first thing you need is something to put on it. So we gave you a turkey body to color Colors can be scribbles. Colors can actually look like a turkey. Depending on how old your child is, they can do their own cutting or and their own coloring. You'll know. You know, for our second and third graders that picked up kits, uh, you'll want to be, you'll probably end up doing more of this and cutting very carefully on the lines. Okay, so for the paper, you want your turkey to be, body to be cut out just like that. The next thing you need to do is peel off the paper. Get your clear contact paper and get a corner started. <laughs> this also is about fine motor control and maybe fingernails, which I don't have. Oh, there we go. I got a corner started. Peel this off and it has a sticky side and a smooth side. We're going to be using the sticky side. That's the part you want. And the first thing you want is to put your turkey right in the middle of the paper and squish it down. So you put it right in the middle and it's sticky on the turkey side. We want it sticky because the fun of this is sticking and resticking the feathers. This is a, a craft, a sensory craft that is really popular with toddlers. Toddlers can amuse themselves for a long time just with a loop of scotch tape. And this is about as good. So the next thing you want to do is put this sticky side out on a tabletop or for us, we're going to put it on a wall. All right.
Okay, let's move this a little farther, a little closer, I mean, so you can see what I did. So I stuck my turkey to the wall and the sticky side's out. You'll want to choose your fridge or something that your child can reach. The next thing you do is take the feathers out of the bag and give them to your child and see what kind of a turkey tail they would like to make. You may worry that the feathers will get torn up. Don't. These are industrial strength feathers. They can be moved and repositioned. They have to really be smoothed to get them to stick. So. So you just start experimenting with sticking on feathers. And your feathers can go any which way. And if you want to move them, you can. And you, can, you have to stick them down pretty hard or they'll fall off. So there's our sticky turkey sensory craft. Good morning. Let's get started. We're going to make some tasteable pumpkin dough. The ingredients are simple. They're on your handout. You need a can of pumpkin puree and a whole box of cornstarch. You need something to make the dough smell good. You can use cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. You're going to put yeah, probably about three tablespoons or so in, so you need a good amount, but it's pretty much to make it taste and or, um, smell like you want it to. And for additional sensory feedback, you could put something in it, like I'm going to add a few rainbow sprinkles to see how that feels. But you could also do chocolate chips or, I don't know, just depends on your child and what you think they like. So let's get started. I've already opened up my can of puree. I'm going to put this into my big bowl. You use the whole pan. And the whole bag of cornstarch. Be careful when you put this in, kids. It can get messy. And this is how it looks to start with. You're just going to start stirring and stirring and stirring. And start working the pumpkin puree and the quart starch together. and smushing. So here's how it's starting to look now. Still got some smushing to go. If, if your pumpkin dough gets too dry, too crumbly, can just add a little bit of water. Mine's pretty crumbly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add my spice. Um, I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to put about three tablespoons in so it smells good and crumble it all together. 
And then what I'm going to do, once I feel like the spice is distributed, then I'm going to add a little bit of water. To, until it gets to Play-Doh consistency. Ooh, it smells yummy. It smells good. It smells like pumpkin pie. So this dough is a sensory dough and we're getting in the sense of smell. It's tasteable, so um, sense of taste. And of course, dough is tactile. You can see how it feels. All right, so one 15 and a half can, ounce can of pumpkin puree and a whole thing of dough makes very crumbly, powdery mix. So let's get a little bit of water. I'm gonna start by adding, I'm gonna get a third of a cup of water and we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to add about a spoonful at a time, not the whole thing. Because you can add water, but you can't take the water back out. Not easily. Another spoonful or so. And it's starting to come together. About to take the rest of it. Ooh, it's starting to feel like Play-Doh. here that did not get worked in with the rest. And there we go. So I've got Really neat dough that just needs to be kneaded, just like you do bread dough. And my house smells like, my kitchen smells like pumpkin pie, because the dough smells so yummy. This is probably a good point where you might want to get your children involved because they can work on smushing the dough too. But it only takes a few drops of water to make the dough stickier. So if your dough is dry, I would recommend that adults supervise adding water because I'm sure it would take only a spoonful more of water to make this into a sticky mess. So here I've got my pumpkin, taste safe pumpkin dough. I'm gonna add in some sprinkles, just for fun. Here, let's see if my bowl of sprinkles. Ta-da! And squish them in. So this, is something that you can do in your kitchen. This is something that with assistance, a two-year-old could do, even maybe 18 months old. You could have a lot of fun with this. One of my favorite things to do with children is sneak a little math in here and there. It's obvious when we teach our children how to count and numbers that that's math, but sorting, and shapes and shape recognition and patterns. Those are math too. The more of that we do with our toddlers and our preschoolers, the easier it is when they get to kindergarten. So what I have for us today is I want to show you how to make a sensory bin. Now this one is very much set up for older kids. 
It has three colors, two of which are almost the same, although that was sort of an accident. And there are three shapes of pasta. And then I'm going to add some more treats in because the more interesting you can make this, the more senses you can involve, the better. So it's good to have a bin, um, can be any size you want, could be small. I've seen on the internet bins large enough to fit a small child in them. In fact, the pictures were really funny because there were small children in the sensor bins. You always have a base in your bins, something to dig through, something to make it fun to search for hidden treasures. You put something interesting in. Your base can be, could be for this time of year, could be dried shelled corn, like feed, feed corn that you give to squirrels. You could use rice, you can use lentils, you can use pasta, which is what I've done. You could use about anything. And to make a sensory bin, add as many different textures and smells and colors as you feel fits. So for here, I've got green, I've got red, and I've got, well, it was supposed to be blue, but it's more like teal. So I've got different colors to dig through. I have some bowls for sorting and for putting treasures. I have tools. These come in your bag, they're in your kit. You have to have tools for fine motor control, for digging out the red pasta and putting in the bowls, or learning to use tweezers. Now these tweezers, uh, these tongs are especially made for younger children because you'll see they've got two dents on one side and they have a dent, one dent on the other for the thumb. So this is part of this lesson is about teaching how to hold these and how to use these. And teaching how to use a certain finger grip is good practice for when we start to teach how to hold a pencil. I want something that smells good. So I've got, ooh, I've got cinnamon sticks. Mmm, I'm gonna put some cinnamon sticks in. I'm going to put some, I want to put some feathers in. It would be fun to put some fall leaves in or acorns or some of those cute decorative gourds. I really want to put, the idea is to mix it up, put interesting things. If your kid is a fan of Hot Wheels, put in some Hot Wheels. If they like, I don't know, pretend gems, put in some gems, put in something fun. Um, I think if, if we were building one of these for me, maybe I would be putting in M&Ms to search for, something like that. I have a recipe for how to dye pasta, how to dye rice and get it different colors. So I'll show you in a minute. This is how our green and red and blue pasta came out. If you make colored pasta, I'd recommend that you use yellow and red and green because our blue pasta didn't turn out very blue. The blue coloring, food coloring, and yellow pasta I bet you know. You know what blue and yellow makes, right? That's right. We ended up with bluish green pasta and green pasta. So they're hard to tell the difference. If you use something white, like rice, you can get much brighter colors. Here's some rice that I made for another program. I made red and blue and green and yellow. So you can use food coloring, 
You can use um, food dyes, tandoori food dye works well. Um, I think turmeric would work well for yellow. There are a lot of different ways to do it. You need to set the color with either white vinegar or with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol makes for more intense bright colors than the vinegar does. But once you once you have oh, once you have your 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 sensory bin set up, it's time to set your child free. What I did was take three shapes of pasta, three colors, and mix it all up so that there are all kinds of ways to sort. This one, I sorted only red. All the different shapes, but only red. And this one, uh-oh, I have a volunteer. This one has only this shape in it. There are a lot of things you can do with sensory bins, depending on what you want for your child and your child's age. So if you've got an elementary school child, you make it smaller and give more colors, more shapes, more ways to sort, make things a little trickier to pick up. If you're doing this for a toddler, Definitely think about what you want to go into their mouth and what you don't want to go into their mouth. So I wouldn't put acorns, for instance, in a sensory bin for a toddler because those would definitely be a choking hazard. But different kinds of pasta might work or just rice, just something for the feel on their hands, something very simple. I hope you enjoy this. In the next section, uh, you can see me dyeing the pasta. That was easy to do. It was all things that I had in my kitchen, and I did it in about 10 minutes before my morning coffee. Hi, let's make some different colors of pasta that your child can sort. I got three kinds of pasta. I got some salad rotini, some salad shells, and some rigatoni. And what I did, what I wanted for this was to have three different shapes. I'm going to divide each of these into three different portions and do three different colors so that we have all kinds of ways this can be sorted. This is the kind of complexity you'd probably want for a three or four year old. If you have a two year old, you might wanna make it similar, simpler if you're just starting with the idea of sorting. Maybe just one shape, three different colors. Maybe one color, three different shapes. Maybe even simpler. Your first step might be just learning to pick all the pasta shells out. I put some tongs and a spoon in your kit bags so that your children can work on fine motor control with the pinchers, the little tweezers, and or with scooping spoonfuls out. The more you work on fine motor skills with your children as toddlers and preschoolers, the more easily they learn to write when they start coming into kindergarten. Writing practice is part of literacy and sorting and patterns are part of math. So coloring the pasta, coloring lentils, coloring rice, all works together. So to do this, you're gonna need some gallon Ziploc bags. You'll need some food coloring You'll need either distilled white vinegar or rubbing alcohol, either way. I find rubbing alcohol makes the colors of the dye a little bit brighter. Another color that works well is food, co um, food coloring powders. A lot of times for my red, I get the brightest red out of tandoori color from Indian stores. So. What you want to do is open up 
your bag and I'm going to put in, I'm going to load this with three different kinds of pasta. Once you have your pasta shapes in your bag, open it up, measure in about a third of a cup of either rubbing alcohol or of distilled white vinegar. And empty it into your bag of pasta. This bag's got three different shapes in it to make sorting more interesting. Then you need your food coloring. You'll need about 20 to 30 drops of the food coloring. So I've done blue, I've done green, I'm going to do red. Twenty drops or so, and a couple, and a squirt for good measure. This is the most important part. Seal your bag. Make sure it's airtight because you're gonna take it. Now. You want to, you want to get the dye all over. So we've got red, we've got blue, and we've got green. So let's shake these a little bit more. Now you're going to wait about 10 minutes or so. Then you'll use a colander or a sieve over the sink to drain the color, the extra coloring liquid off of this. When this is done, after it's soaked for 10 minutes, you'll put it on aluminum foil. Something where you can spread it out flat and let it dry overnight. And you want it, some kind of aluminum foil, something so that the dye does not stain your kitchen countertops. Um, and watch your hands as you spread it out. It'd be a good idea to use a spoon or you might end up with red or blue or green hands.